Ladies and gentlemen, I am Ian Izzle, and I am not alone. Come on, baby! Vocal that's right, Johnny, that's right, guys. that's right. There are two of us, me and John, decided that it would be a pretty cool idea to give you guys a little bit of a sneak preview, because we are doing live reactions to SummerSlam. It is currently 9.45 p.m. Eastern Time. We are watching SmackDown. Chris Jericho versus Alberto Del Rio is now underway officially. We wanted to give you guys a little bit of a preview. Two man live reactions to the SmackDown main event. And as soon as SmackDown is over, before we record TwitWow, we're going to be recording in this exact same video. That's why it's longer than 15 minutes. Our official SummerSlam predictions. So, John, let's go. I'm very excited. As you see, Del Rio actually demonstrating sound psychology here. Ashton working on the midsection of Jericho when they're only going in this contest. And you know he's going to start working on the arm any second now. And there we go, right to the shoulder. I don't know. I, I thought Jericho seemed to be favoring more of the midsection there. I don't know. I, Del Rio's kind of impressing me here. Let's see again. Oh! That was pretty nasty. That, like, that nasty uh, double stomp. See, this is what I think Jericho does. I think being in the ring with Jericho teaches you sound fundamentals in the ring. Del Rio's actually being a genuine psychologist here. It's not about the arm right now. It's about the midsection that Ziggler beautifully assaulted backstage. I like this. I really like this. Oh, oh yeah. We forgot to mention uh, Dolph Ziggler attacked Jericho before the match. It was amazing. Uh, I preferred what Dolph Ziggler said to what he did because he didn't really do all that much. He... Nailed Jericho with the briefcase and then, like, ran this big, like, weird shelving unit into Jericho. But what he said was, you can't overlook me. You still can't win the big one because I'm too good. So, yeah, Ziggler, you know, Ziggler's still one of my favorite guys in the company. Oh, absolutely, actually. And, and that's my thing. You know, Confucius once said, uh, a real man never lets his words outrun his deeds. And, and Ziggler keeps pace with both. Because it was a beautiful assault, and what he said about it, you know, don't overlook me because I'm too damn good, was just perfect for the atmosphere he created. As you saw Jericho there with the jumping in Siguri to kind of regain momentum, kind of shifting the match in his favor now. Yeah, and you know what's kind of funny is that that's the move that Del Rio used as a finisher for a while when he wasn't just winning with the arm breaker. Yeah, and you know what? I actually, I, I bought it. You know, I normally look at moves like an in Siguri as kind of like a mid-match maneuver or a setup maneuver, but... You know, with Del Rio, with the, with the sound that he makes those kicks, like that right there, yeah. that it just looks painful. You know, I could buy it. I'm really loving Del Rio here, dude. It hasn't been about the arm. It's been all about the midsection. This yeah, when Del Rio wrestles angry, he's better. But when his matches get long and drawn out is when he gets worse. Which is weird because, like, the really good wrestlers like Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, Jericho, Christian, I could go on and on. Their rep matches tend to improve as time goes on. Del Rio's the opposite. His diminish. Remember that match you had with Big Show on Raw? Oh, my God. I think it was over a year ago. I'm still burned in my mind as one of Del Rio's worst matches. Just so boring. And, and well, nobody can tell enough, me. I can honestly say that, no, I don't remember that match. Well, I'll tell you what. Either it was so bad you repressed it, or it was so bad that it wasn't even worth the mind like yours remembering. But regardless... Uh, you know, we can't fault the Big Show for that one because CM Punk proved you can, in fact, pull a good match out of the Big Show. And if CM Punk isn't good enough for you guys, Mark Henry. Well, I know a lot of people said it's equally worse, and God, I miss Mark Henry. Yeah, unfortunately, though, he's probably coming back as a babyface, which, I mean, I, I don't know how to feel about that because if he goes back to being the Kool-Aid man, I will be just so disappointed, but... If he comes back as Hall of Pain Mark Henry, where instead of inducting faces into the Hall of Pain, he inducts heels, then we'll talk. Definitely, and, and that that's a very good point, because that's the only way I'll be able to happily digest a Mark Henry face turn. The idea that he's become emotionally aware and like in charge of his feelings just is all kinds of wrong to me. Uh, Fifteen years. You know, I, mean, that, I didn't that's give you permission to start feeling feelings. Don't let your foolish pride get in the way of your return. Uh, you know, it's just uh, angry Mark Henry is just has so many gems that you and I quote. I mean, we just quote it now, and we'll probably keep quoting months later. Uh, you know. <laughs> but one return I'm ecstatic about is if anybody saw the vignette tonight, Wade Barrett. Oh, this Barrett. My barrage has only just begun. Uh, no, this repackaging is just dynamite. I... Cannot wait. 
really. It's just, it's something, I hope it's a new intensity. I love the beard. I, I don't know. I think facial hair can make a lot of difference with certain superstars. Look what it did for Randy Orton. Definitely. I thought John Morrison rocked facial hair. Randy Orton, definitely. Uh, Wade Barrett is part of that club. Daniel Bryan. Um, Even The Miz, which, I mean, he, he barely has any, but it, it makes a difference. Definitely. I, it it shows that, you know, the performers matured. Even on a physical sense, you could almost, you know, if the person carries himself the right way. It oh makes him look more like a man. Exactly. CM Punk WWE 13 commercial. The only commercial that I can actually tolerate in between WWE. Definitely. Smash I've heard about those off the air. Commercials come on. My brain goes directed towards my computer. But then when the, the when the Punk WWE 13 Revolution commercial comes on, I go right back to the TV. And speaking of going back to the TV, we're back in the match. Del Rio has Jericho in a rear chin lock, and he actually has a grapevine. Yeah, very nice body scissors utilized by Del Rio right. here. Del Rio playing an excellent ground game by this analyst's estimation. Uh, you know, Jericho will have to be forced to fight up, which I think only garners more sympathy for the babyface when he's already struggling from a pre-match assault. Yes, that's what I love, is because um, Jericho got assaulted before the match, which means he automatically gets a huge obstacle to overcome. So if he wins this match, it's going to be huge. If he loses, it's going to be like, okay, well, he got attacked beforehand, so it's believable. Exactly. It's really, it's one of those booking situations where it really is win-win because you have the breathing room of a multitude of avenues, none of which I think have any negative drawbacks. Yep. I mean, you don't have to try to really garner a negative uh, drawback from an atmosphere like this. Right. And on top of that, it gets Ziggler some... See, and again, to... again to the midsection. Who is yeah, this guy? Yeah, that's kind of weird. I wonder why he's doing that. Is Del Rio going to debut a new finisher tonight? Potentially, but I want to know who this is and what happened to ADR because... You know, and here's the thing. I was thinking about it. You know, seeing this match, if Del Rio did stuff like this all match and he just started working on the arm like towards the end to set up for the finisher, I could forgive that because I think a lot of guys do that. It's kind of, you know, status quo. We see even with Randy Orton, you know, the DDT kind of stuns the opponent before the RKO. Right. So if, if Del Rio was to work on the uh, on the arm towards the tail end. Oh, he went for a double stomp. Failure. Oh, man. How painful would that have been, though, if it executed? Good thing for Jericho there. But yeah, Del Rio started working on the arm towards the, uh, you know, towards the tail end of the matchup. I could forgive it. I like right. this. And now Jericho making the comeback. Jericho with the kicks to the legs, very reminiscent of Rey Mysterio. Definitely. And again, we see Del Rio driving the wind out of Jericho. Man, you weren't kidding. Del Rio is really focusing on the midsection. This is weird. But impressive at the same time. I, you know, it's it's I pleasantly so weird. Why it's all connecting. Oh, he's not oh, he's not capitalizing. That's a move, Ash, that we call a double-edged sword. Jericho driving the wind out of his sails. Yep. Hooks the leg here. Of course, it's going to be, yeah. For sure. you, no, you're never going to get a three count if you wait that long to go for a cover. Wrestling Fan Logic 101. The only time I ever saw that broken, I remember WrestleMania 19, Triple H versus Booker T., he nails a pedigree, and it was like five minutes later he gets the cover, still gets the three count. Oh, Triple H. You and yeah, your field yeah, count. Triple H. Beautiful H counter. Yeah, it was. That. Oh, oh, that. oh man. I, I'm so disappointed that he stopped using the lion tamer now. Why? Did, get out of my head, dude. I was like, now drive the knee into the back of his head. Oh, oh, look at Del Rio. He's punching him in the butt. He was just punching him right right in the, the upper calf, or upper thigh, a.k.a. the butt. And, oh, Ziggler's out there. When did he get out there? I have no idea. But genius camera work to make sure that we didn't know that Ziggler was present. Now, how is Del Rio going to capitalize on this? That was so weird. That was such a random cut. It looked like Ziggler was headed to the back, and next thing you know, he grabs Jericho and throws him back in the ring. And Ziggler by Del Rio, and he gets the win. Oh, my God! That was the victory! See, see, I said he used to use it as a finisher, as if I was dismissing it as a current finisher, and then he goes and uses it as a finisher now. What is going on? I think this is one of Del Rio's best matches, because he was actually, I mean, awesome, like, in tune with his opponent. Yeah. That was something else. I 
I mean, again, who is this person and what happened to Alberta? Oh, wait, here he is. Yeah, yeah, really. He's back. Using the arm. See, right. see, at least here in the post match, I can understand it. Because um, yeah, now it's like torture, and Ziggler's getting up in Jericho's face. Man, Ziggler's all over the place. I swear, they must have recorded this match twice, and Ziggler was in different spots in both matches because he's like bouncing from one end to the other. <laughs> and of course, out comes Sheamus. This is the first time Sheamus has been on TV all night, isn't it? Yeah, it has. Wow! The go-home show and the World Heavyweight Champion doesn't have a match, doesn't show up until the last four minutes of the show. I guess they're That's really they're really playing up that assault. Oh, Del Rio digging at the eyes. Face, Jesus. I think Del Rio got a membership card from Wade Barrett for the Fight Club. <laughs> he was fish hooking him. Now make sure you dig for the pupil. If you hit the cornea, it's useless. Wow, John. Yeah, I went there. Only you, only you. <laughs> oh, cross arm breaker, but no. Nope. Spear out of the ring. Kind Seamus says, I'm too ginger for that maneuver to work. Actually, Seamus says, I'm too invulnerable for that maneuver to work. <laughs> what were you saying in that top ten problems video? Invulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Seamus, the true last son of Krypton. <laughs> Don't worry, Kal-El. Soon, the stars will align. And then you'll beat Brainiac and save... Oh, God, I can't even... Well, I'd say Smallville, but what was the actual town in the animated series? Oh, I forget it. The joke oh, I lost. have no clue. You're seriously asking me that question? Metropolis, I think it was. How comes Booker T? What now? What now? Oh, Shocky Cowie promo. Did you just say promo? Yes. Wow. Random. And of course, Sheamus is the one that gets Del Rio his match back. Not anything aggressive on the part of the heel, no, it's just the plight of a baby face. You're injured. You're injured. You're injured. You're injured. You're injured. You're injured. And you won't be competing at SummerSlam. Now, can you dig that? I really hope this doesn't translate into Del Rio beating Sheamus with the arm breaker because of Sheamus' injured arm. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not the biggest Sheamus fan, but I really don't want him to drop that title to Del Rio. I want Del Rio out of the title picture, and I want Dolph Ziggler to be the one to take the title off of Sheamus with that money in the bank briefcase. Now, can you dig that? Uh, yeah, I can, suckers. But here's the thing, Ashton. Because of what I see translating here, and I hate to be that guy to everybody in our live reactions, but I can actually see Del Rio winning the title at SummerSlam. Uh, it'll be that old adage, pride cometh before the fall. And I think Seamus' pride is going to come back to bite him in the arse. <laughs> Seamus is mad. Yeah, he's turning five shades of red and he still looks pale white. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you got it, sucker. Ooh. Seamus is passionate. And see, I was kind of fearing this. And, and you know what? I was thinking about it today, and I think I wouldn't have minded so much us coming full circle if Booker T said, you know what? We are going to have your match, but to make sure that there's no tomfoolery or any kind of a term like that, and to make sure, Seamus, that your health is only confined to that ring and nothing else, any other parties are banned from ringside, which would include Ricardo, so they'd have a straight-up world title match. To not even have any repercussions in that regard, I... I don't know how I feel about that. Well, you never know. Repercussions like that usually play out during the pay-per-view anyway, so we'll see. That's very true. That's very true. But overall, a very solid episode of SmackDown. I'm, I'm Absolutely. Gonna... I can't wait to talk about it on Twitwell. But before then, we have some official SummerSlam predictions to get through. Uh, oh, let's let's start. Yeah. You know what? Let's start at the very bottom of the card. We all know what the pre-show match is going to be. 
Santino Morella defending his United States Championship against Antonio Cesaro. I think we agree on this one. How about? Definitely. Um, and, and hopefully it does come to pass. I think this will be a solid pre-show match. I, I got to be honest, Santino didn't grate on my nerves uh, tonight with his commentary. It seems like he's going to really be in the zone. We may see a more aggressive Santino Morella come SummerSlam, but I think this newfound fire still won't be enough to uh, you know impede the momentum of Antonio Cesaro. I do genuinely believe we're looking at a new United States champion who can speak five different languages. Yeah, and you know what? On, on top of that, I, the way I see this, this is the WWE's way of putting over their pre-shows as must-see. They're going right. to have a title change at a pre-show. It's going to make people go, holy crap, I missed a title change. I have to watch that next time. Absolutely, Ashley. I mean, and did you read, because I, I believe I read somewhere on some internet dirt, uh, which anybody listening, whenever we do live reactions or collaborations, whenever I say that, you can always assume no DQ, uh, that, you know, they're thinking about getting pre-shows on a television network. So I think this may be the start of, like you said, making sure that people know it's must-see, and then when it translates onto a TV network, they're bringing numbers along with them. So I, I definitely think this is laying the foundation for that, in my personal opinion. All right. We obviously agree on that. Let's move on. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking the, the curtain jerker, and I hate to do this, but I'm thinking the curtain jerker is probably going to be Jericho versus Ziggler, uh, if for no other reason, just because this will not only get the crowd started hot, because you know this is going to be a show stealer, but if they put this match first, then it'll be more believable if Ziggler cashes in on Sheamus at the end of the night. I think I actually like it as the opener because to me that kind of gives an indication that it is going to get a decent amount of time. Uh, yeah, know? it'll probably get it'll probably get at least fifteen minutes, if not twenty. Which I think fifteen to twenty is just the amount they need, and honestly, it would be just the amount that I would want. Yeah. Um, you know, Jericho is amazing, but we have to keep in mind he's also forty three. I wouldn't want him to get too winded. That's not me trying to be callous. It's just you know me taking all parameters in mind. Right. But uh, let's let's look back at uh, uh, Monday when Jericho was in that. I think it was Monday. It might have been last week. When Jericho was in that tag match, and he was clearly... Actually, you know what? It might have been the triple threat on Monday. Uh, Jericho was clearly getting winded, and he was starting to breathe heavy. But you know what? He kept pushing forward. He didn't pull a Booker T or a Big Show or a Brock Lesnar and start huffing and puffing and barely moving. He was huffing and puffing, but he then he landed a freaking lion salt. So when right. Jericho gets winded, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing for the fans. It's just a bad thing for him. And he exactly. needs to recover from it. And yeah, all, all my respect in the world to Chris Jericho, because when you look at the guys that you just mentioned, I mean, the match quality really does begin to suffer as a result. To me, even when Jericho got winded, the match only got better. Yeah. Uh, and I, I've said this, Ash, on multiple occasions. I'll say it again here. I feel like if this match gets the proper time, which I think the best chance of that, ironically enough, would be if it was the opener. Right. Uh, it could be match of the night at SummerSlam. I, I don't want people turning a blind eye to this contest and just so, you know, Lesnar, Triple H, Lesnar, Triple H. That this oh, could and you steal. know what, dude? Lesnar and Triple H aren't going to put on one of those five-star classics that you would expect from, like, a, uh, what, what we got at, at WrestleMania with Triple H and Undertaker or anything like that. They're gonna they're gonna put on like a what what Cena and Lesnar did at Extreme Rules, except it'll be a little bit more even than that was because the WWE likes to make Triple H look like as the off the ropes show say God. Exactly, and um, but but as far as this match goes to pick a winner, I'm still torn about this because it seems like they're garnering a lot of sympathy for Jericho. Yeah, and and of course Jericho just had his face turned, so right. Yeah. I'm still picking Ziggler though to pick up the W. I, that's that's my pick. Well, let's put it this way. I am officially picking Dolph Ziggler as well, but I hope Jericho wins because if Jericho wins, it'll most likely translate into a Knight of Champions match involving the two of them, which also means Jericho is going to be sticking around past SummerSlam, which is, in my opinion, Jericho sticking around past SummerSlam is more important than Ziggler picking up one win over Jericho at SummerSlam. Right, and here's my thing, and just again, my personal opinion. I feel like if Jericho were to beat Ziggler at SummerSlam, I would want him to taunt Ziggler that, you know, I guess it's you now that can't win the big one, and kind of goad Ziggler to put the briefcase on the line. Right. And then maybe have Ziggler retain the briefcase at Night of Champions, which would also translate later in the night to him cashing it in. I think that would be so poetic, um, you know, on a WWE pay per view, and I, I would really like that. So that's personally how I would book it if what you're prophesizing kind of comes to pass, you know, if Jericho wins. So, yeah, that would be interesting. I don't know if I would go as far as to say defend it at night of champions, then cash in at night of champions, maybe defend it on a wall leading up to it and then cash in. At night of I honestly, I think that 
we're going to get a World Heavyweight Championship six-pack challenge involving guys like Sheamus, Orton, uh, Del Rio, maybe Mark Henry comes back, Wade Barrett, Cody Rhodes, Rey Mysterio, lots of different people on the SmackDown brand in a six-pack challenge. Sheamus retains after a brutal 25-minute six-pack challenge match. Then Ziggler comes in and kills everyone's momentum. I I really hope so, because I've, I've got to really be honest with everybody, seeing Sheamus, albeit thanks to the aid of others, and that, that's <laughs> kind of been implied, you know, money in the bank. Sheamus only nailed a bro kick because Del Rio interrupted uh, Ziggler's cash-in, which, in my personal eyes, that's the most heat I've ever given Del Rio because I wanted to rip his head off at that very moment. Uh, <laughs> on the addition of SmackDown, you know, it was uh, Rey Mysterio. On another SmackDown, it was Chris Jericho. Yep. You know, so it's always other people, which I like that WWE's doing that because I know I've complained. I even did, again, a recent video of criticism, and, and Sheamus actually really hogged up, too, altogether. His invulnerability and just his world title reign in general has bored me. Uh, he's... I mean, this program with Del Rio hasn't been the worst program I've ever seen, but I'll be happy when it's over, just put it like that. And I do believe, though, that uh, Ziggler will cash in, and he will become the new World Heavyweight Champion, and then that is going to be must-see television for this guy. I'd say that the five minutes to end SmackDown tonight was the best uh, appearance that Sheamus has made on a SmackDown since he won the world title. And I completely agree with you. It was an impassioned promo. Uh, again, like you, you know, it's like we were joking. Of course it would be the face that would, you know, got the heel what he wanted. But still, solid mic work by Sheamus tonight. I was impressed, genuinely. All right, so. So we're both picking Ziggler over uh, Jericho, although yes. I do have that little stipulation where if Jericho wins, I'll be happy because it implies that he's sticking around. Uh, but let's let's move on. Uh, let's say Kane versus Daniel Bryan. Who are you predicting here? This, I think, honestly, right next to you know Jericho Ziggler is the toughest match to call. Um, some interesting points. I was looking at some YouTube videos, you know, hyping up SummerSlam, and a common thing in the comments was saying that Daniel Bryan hasn't been successful at pay-per-views lately. Right. I, I think Kane may have a better pay-per-view track record. Um, and honestly, thinking about that, I really would like Daniel Bryan to get this win because, again, as I've said, I well, kind of. I mean, look at the matches that Daniel Bryan's been in, though. The last, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, every single pay-per-view match that Daniel Bryan has participated in since TLC December has been for the World or WWE Championship. That's very impressive. Uh, I, I think that speaks volumes about where That's Daniel crazy. Bryan. That just hit me. Because, okay, so he was world champion defending at Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, and Mania. Then at Extreme Rules, he went up against Sheamus. Then at No Way Out... I think it was... Oh, no, it was Over the Limit. What happened with him at Over the Limit? He was the in... Punk. Sorry, wait, was no, that was him one-on-one -on -one with Punk, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then what was No Way Out? Was that again... Simple threat. Punk, Brian, and Kane. That's right. And then at Money in the Bank, he went one-on-one -on -one with Punk again. Right. Yeah, and every single one. Holy crap. Yeah, so... And I'll I mean, tell you this, Ashton. I feel like at Night of Champions, that, that pattern resumes itself. Because I do see Daniel Bryan getting in on the WWE title picture somehow. Oh, uh, I, I certainly hope so. Maybe we'll have two six-pack challenges. That wouldn't bother me. No, absolutely not. I don't know. I just feel like with Daniel Bryan's obsession and with WWE kind of throwing him a bone with that obsession, you know, being in the tag matches, whatever, the one-on-one exactly. -on -one match seen a few weeks back, Yeah. I really feel like, you know, maybe they're saving, and I really am just now thinking about this, Maybe they're saving Punk Cena for Hell in a Cell because they want to give some credibility back to the pay-per-view, and they think a feud like this that has been going on for quite some time should be reserved for the Cell. In fact, honestly, that's my prediction. I don't think we're going to get Cena Punk at Night of Champions. It's just now hitting me, you know, Hell in a Cell. Both world champions are going to be defending their titles in the structures. I think they're going to want to save Punk Cena for that just to kind of add, like, oh, my God, it's Punk Cena, Hell in a Cell. Uh, Night of Champions, we may very well see two six-pack challenges, which, like you... No complaints from this guy. But to get back to the match, um, I do think it, it's a it's an important match for Daniel Bryan. I would like to see him pick up the win because if he is going to go to Night of Champions, I would like to see some gas in his tank. Uh, regardless, though, this match is going to be great. Kane is one of my favorite veterans on the roster currently, and Daniel Bryan, I think, is one of the most entertaining performers on the WWE product right now. I mean, even Jim Ross has been giving him high marks. I think he said at one point, no one is as well put together right now as Daniel Bryan. And, you know, coming from Jim Ross, that, that is the highest praise you could possibly get. Right. Uh, I'm expecting a great contest here, Ashton. What about you? Well, who's your official pick to win? My official pick to win, locking it in, Daniel Bryan. My official pick to win is Kane, actually. Um, I think Daniel Bryan's going to continue his losing streak at pay-per-views for a very different reason. 
than the one that he has had lately because obviously he's been competing for gold. And when you lose at a pay-per-view for gold, it's not that big of a deal because you were in the match in the first place. <laughs> right. And, and like I said, Daniel Bryan, since TLC, every single pay-per-view match he's been in has been for a world or have, uh, WWE championship. And to me, that's huge. Like the fact that that just hit me now, like, wow, that's just crazy. But yeah, I, I do think Kane's going to get one up. I want Daniel Bryan to win. I really do, because if he wins, then that gives him even more reason to say, I deserve a WWE Championship match, and end up getting in there for uh, Night of Champions. But uh, just just kind of the way the storyline has been playing out, I do see Kane winning. And like I said, the more Daniel Bryan loses, the more over he gets. And I think the WWE knows that, and they're going to use that to their full advantage. And, uh, but here's the thing, though, actually, at least in my opinion, I think it's a very fine line to walk. I agree with you on this day, but what happens when you and I meet up next time? That novelty could wear off. So be, be very cautious with that tool you're using, because while I agree with you at the moment, and it certainly presents itself when you look at SmackDown and Raw taping. Okay, maybe I uh, should reword that. The more Daniel Bryan loses to top main event guys, the more over he gets. Right, that... Yeah, that I think I could sign on to more, uh, you know, more securely. Uh, I'm not saying I, he should go lose in the Brodus Clay or anything crazy like that. Right, I'm just right, saying right. when he right. loses to John Cena and CM Punk and Sheamus and now Kane, you know, when he loses to guys of that caliber, the Internet gets behind him even more. That's very true because, hey, they, they want to see him triumph. I mean, Daniel Bryan's had a very interesting, uh, you know, year, you know, interesting 2011. And now especially, you know, 2012 has been very – uh, promising for Daniel Bryan, both right. in his ups and his downs. And I do see him beating Kane, though, because, I don't know, Kane is an exceptional talent, and I've really enjoyed this run. I don't really know how I feel about him being faced, but then again, he hasn't gotten hokey, so I'm okay with it. Exactly. Um, but he I do think he will he, do the he job. He still hasn't gone into any love interests, although I wouldn't be surprised if AJ came up again soon. Oh, uh, Please don't. I, I and and you know my my reasons for that. It's not the time or the place, but I just know. And it's not even all about Kane. But again, we'll get to that, I guess, later. But yeah, Daniel Bryan to pick up the W here for me. And you said Kane, so we're kind of torn on that one. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll be doing our live reactions. So anyone watching that will know uh, just how much crow either one of us has to eat. Uh, let's see here. Tag team championship. Primetime players versus R. Boom. Uh, very interesting scenario here. You know uh, on TwitWow, guys, that both me and Ashton have been very happy about how the tag team division has been spotlighted as of late. And we'll talk uh, more about the, the up-and-comers in the tag division after tonight on SmackDown because uh, uh, I won't say debut, but an interesting rework of a tag team happened on SmackDown tonight that is definitely a talking point. Absolutely. And my thing is, Ashton, I think the bigger question here, you know, for fans of the primetime players or just people looking forward to this match how much is AEW's absence going to influence the outcome? You know, how much is that going to press on this match? Because I think if AEW was still with the primetime players, you and I would probably have an easier time just saying, yeah, primetime players to get the titles. I oh, don't know. Absolutely. If AEW was still around and, and he kept PTP relevant, I would be PTP all the way, let them get the titles and see what they can do with it. But AEW is not around anymore, and we saw on Monday just how – bland ptp is without him so my official prediction here is our boom over and see that's again we're torn again because even with aw's absence and i know we were talking about this i do think primetime players are going to win the titles here but here's my little asterisk um i don't see them holding the gold that long i see them dropping it at night of champions to epico and primo preppy go uh, yes preppy go <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's just I can I can never say that name with a straight face. Uh, Either one of us can. That's why I love it so much. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely see these guys just kind of being filler for the tag titles, so they can you know bring the bigger story arc, and that's Prepico, you know, consistently being screwed out of their title matches, you know, at come full circle at Night of Champions with them being champions again for a second time. Hopefully with Rosa Mendez in their corner, please, please, uh, please. Uh, you know, so, I mean, that's just my thing, Ashton. So, but understand, though, I'm only picking PTP because I'm thinking they're more of a storyline tool rather than legitimate champions. So, really, transitional champs. Exactly. Um, to get plus, from one babyface team to the next. Plus, I think if you're WWE, you're also kind of thinking, okay, how do we keep people 
who are interested in this team, either the way that we want them to be or genuine fans, you know, not thinking too much about AW, we'll put the straps on them anyway. So, you know, kind of plug up the hole of the absence, if you will. I just don't like our boom's chances here. All right. Well, we're definitely torn on that one as well. Let's see here. Um, other than the three big main event matches involving the titles and a certain COO, uh, the only match that's left that's officially announced is the Intercontinental Championship match between Mysterio and Miz. And I think that we can both agree Miz is probably going over here. Yeah, I mean, the, the fan in me would love a third Rey Mysterio Intercontinental title reign, but Miz is definitely retaining. And here's the thing. I've got no problem with that either. Miz has definitely uh, shown me the hunger and the fire is is back inside him since, once again, being relegated to the mid-card and representing it as a champion. Right. Uh, I expect a solid match between these two. I'm, I'm dead serious. I've been liking how Miz has been performing as of late. Rey Mysterio is timeless. I've, I've always been a fan of his work. Um, and, and I feel like this would be one of those I don't matches. know about timeless, dude. He's kind of, I don't know. I, I love Rey Mysterio as much as the next guy, but, I mean, he's wrestling in a shirt. Yeah, and I mean, I know, and we were talking about that earlier, but to me, he hasn't been bad at all. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this run, personally. Um, hopefully, one day, he will take the shirt off, and hopefully, what's ever, like, underneath, it's like, oh, okay, he's in good shape. But, you know, considering everything he's had going against him, certainly not bad performances. And I think, you know, if nothing else, this contest, you know, when Miz goes over, that I, I do believe, again, even though I'm kind of fan of Miz pulling for Ray, it'll legitimize Miz's reign. Because I've you know I've heard the rumblings on the internet of people complaining oh the intercontinental title is slowly drifting back into a transitional title and here's my thing I haven't worried about that too much because even though some of the reigns have been brief with the exception of Cody Rhodes who you can't even count in a negative light because collectively he was IC champion for nine months between his two reigns right. uh, it's gone to all former world champions exactly. I mean that's that's and, really and you know what if Rey Mysterio that. were to win on Sunday by some random fluke and I say that not because I don't think he should. I say that because what are the chances of WWE actually doing that and, and making Miz drop the title a month after he wins it. But right. really, um, if Mysterio would win, guess what? That trend continues. Exactly. I mean, hell, it was the Intercontinental Championship that made Big Show a Grand Slam champion. Yeah. Um, so really, I've been loving the booking of the IC title. Uh, that's what he's looking back on giving Big Show the IC title now is just like, wow, why, why, why did he do that? I, I don't know, but hey, still, even that, I really, when people ask me about it, I've never complained about it because one, we just mentioned the trend earlier, and two, the way he dropped it, I mean, really what irked me more was the post-match, how he just decimated Cody rather than just him losing in that fashion, right. but really, I'm never going to complain about the booking of the Intercontinental Championship, at least at this present moment, because it has been just superb. Um, and really, it's so this, funny though because like going into WrestleMania, you and I were just like, "Yeah, Big Show's gonna win and get his huge baby face WrestleMania moment." And now he's supposed to be—I'm not saying he is—he's supposed to be the top heel in the company. It's just how the tables turn. Uh, Way but, to go, John Laurinaitis. You suck. Exactly. You suck, John Laurinaitis. Uh, but if loser. Loser. But official prediction, uh, unfortunately, you know, Miz to retain here, which, again, is not bad. I've been thoroughly impressed with this guy's reign, and I think he'll only be legitimized at the expense of pinning Ray's shoulders for three seconds. Yeah, did you see the uh, the YouTube video where he goes around and asks random people who they think is going to win that match? No, I did not. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. He's like, all these people are saying Ray Mysterio is going to beat me. I'm going to go see if they'll say it to my face. And, like, nine people did. <laughs> Awesome. Like, even even Divas. I don't remember which Diva it was specifically, but he asked a Diva, and she was like, yeah, Mysterio, because she's he, he's just playing better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find that now. That may be just as funny as when uh, Dolph Ziggler was preparing for his Royal Rumble match against, uh, against Punk. <laughs> don't eat carbs, smack. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> gotta love those WWE.com exclusives. All right. Yeah. Wait, Let's talk know. about the world title match. Del Rio, Sheamus. We are torn on this one, I believe, too, because yeah. I, I'm all about Sheamus going over so that Ziggler can dethrone him and get that honor rather than Del Rio. But you think Del Rio is going to win? Hey, bro. I mean, I understand one thing right now. I'm totally signed on to what you're saying as a mark for Ziggler. Um, looking at it, though, from my personal lens, I don't think Sheamus would cut a promo like that and we'd kind of get the atmosphere that we got to close SmackDown. If again, I, I've said this, and I think it's worth repeating for these, uh, you know, predictions, that uh, pride cometh before the fall. 
Sheamus pushed for this match. He gave Del Rio what he wanted through his own pride, his own anger. And I think it's going to come back to bite him. Now, if my previous complaints of Sheamus resurfaced... Yeah, I was just going to say, let's not forget Sheamus is completely immortal regardless of whether he has too much pride or not. I mean, you know, he did kick out of a co-breaker for a minute, so I could totally believe him staying in a cross-arm breaker with the bad arm for 20 minutes and reaching the ropes. (laughs) And then standing up and doing a perfect brogue kick. With no repercussions whatsoever. And then covering Del Rio, gripping his leg with his weak arm extremely tight. <laughs> uh, Learn hash- to sell long-term, Seamus. Learn to sell long-term. Hashtag douche. Um, <laughs> no, despite, despite the conflict, and I do stand by it, Ash. I mean, your, your point, how comedic it was, is still incredibly valid. Um, you know, I, Here's the thing, guys. I wouldn't be surprised... If Seamus went over, you're not going to hear me when we do our live reactions on Sunday. Be like, what the hell? You know, so, you know, something like that. It's going to be. <laughs> oh, my thanks. goodness. Shucky ducky. This is better than anything I did in TNA. Um, so, you know, you're not going to hear me say to Ashton, you know, wow, I, I can't believe that because I, I would believe it. It's just to me. And maybe this is just me showing my Mark side. I don't think you create an atmosphere like that 48 hours away from a pay-per-view unless you're really hinting at a title change. Um, or an and epic title defense. Very true. Ah! So, uh, I saw what you did there, because you said it right to me. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I am picking Del Rio, though, to become the new world champion. All right. Uh, seems like we're split on a lot of these, man. You're, you're... I, I, I really actually like that, though, because, I mean, you know, we're still totally awesome together, but we're incredibly yeah. delighted about a paper. Totally going to be at each other's throats on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, if by throat you mean hugging each other in awesomeness because we're doing live reactions, then yeah, choke the life out of you. Okay. Now, before we get to the two matches that actually matter, let's talk about improv. Improvised matches. The WWE does it at every single pay-per-view. Do you have any predictions on what matches the WWE might randomly come up with and throw at you for SummerSlam? I know uh, Damian Sandow versus Brodus Clay was the big one that's really been hinted at. I can't oh, I remember. Hope, I, I hope Brodus Clay's still too hurt to work. <laughs> you you really don't want to see Damian Sandow at a SummerSlam. Oh, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him cut a promo or interrupt a stupid segment. Like, how epic would it have been if he would have interrupted the Call My Mama segment at WrestleMania, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But I, I don't necessarily... If he has to work a match at SummerSlam, I hope it's not against Brodus Clay, is what I'm saying. I just think, Ashton, if we get this match, look, look at it this way. You know, we're getting the agony out of the way, and it's nothing against Clay. It's just I know Damian Sandow has bigger fish to fry. Exactly. I mean, he beat Christian on Monday night, and this guy here, and as well as myself, I mean, we were just elated with the result. And and thank you, Christian, for, uh, for doing the job. I mean, that... That is how you build the future. No um, And, you know, my thing is, Ashton, I think when he's done with Brodus Clay, uh, and see, that's why I think the results of the mid-card championship <laughs> matches are going to be of particular interest to me, because I wouldn't be surprised if once Sandow gets done with Clay, that he moves on to a mid-card champion. So I'm going to be paying very close attention to both the United States title match and the Intercontinental title match, because we know if both heels, you know, walk out, Sandow clearly isn't going to go for a championship at this time. Right, I was uh, just going to say, if any of the baby faces walk out on top, then hey, Sandow has a feud. And that's precisely my point. If this match is to happen, I mean, let's cut right to the chase, Ashton. Let's cut right through the crap. Uh, Sandow to go over, absolutely. Right. Clay has no chance of winning this match. Uh, okay, and if he, one other match. Yeah. Actually, there are two other matches I want to throw at you. One, uh, we obviously, before I do talk about these other matches, we agree Sandow to win if that match happens. Definitely. Uh, Ryback versus Jinder Mahal is another possibility because they have been building it up. And I will say, I think we agree on this one too. Ryback over. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Cody Rhodes versus Sin Cara. That, yes, that was the other one. Oh, I would love for Cody Rhodes to get the win here. I just, I don't see it. Um, I think it's a shame because I would love for Cody to learn his lesson and realize that, you know, Sin Cara really hasn't been beating him. Cody Rhodes has been beating himself, uh, but I don't think he'll learn. I think he'll his obsession, whatever the reason for that is, which maybe we'll even get a promo why he's so obsessed with it. Uh, you know, his obsession I think will come to the forefront. Don't we already know? Well, is it is it just because he can relate because he wore a mask and he? Just yeah, beat? I was just gonna say Cody Rhodes wore a mask because he thought he was ugly. 
So, you know, it, it's kind of like Cody Rhodes, I guess, imposing his past insecurities onto Sin Cara. Exactly. Don't, don't really know how I feel about I mean, that. That's but what I, I've been interpreting it. I don't think that's been, like, officially said or anything. <laughs> right, right. Um, and, and I don't think you'd hear Cody Rhodes use the term insecurities with himself, you know, being a heel, because it's all about that arrogance, all about that power. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really wish you did there. I really appreciate and it. And no, David Otunga is not wrestling at SummerSlam. The hole in my heart can attest to that fact. <laughs> uh, I, I, again, Ash, I really do wish Cody Rhodes would learn his lesson here, pick up a win at a big four pay-per-view, and really, again, continue his road tonight at Champions, which you know is a segment I've been having and will continue tonight on TwitWow. But I just, I don't see it. And it's a shame because, again, you know how high I am on Cody Rhodes. And while I'm an all, I'm all for Sin Cara and this run getting pushed because he's been very impressive, yeah. I, just, I just wish it wasn't at Cody's expense. I mean, what right. do you think, bro? Well, what I think is, before I actually talk about the potential Rhodes Sin Cara match, um, everyone seems to be saying, oh, and you know what? I think that this is a moronic thing to do, but a lot of people seem to be thinking that Rey Mysterio is only back to put Sin Cara over and then retire. I think that's stupid. Makes no sense. Rey Mysterio has more to give than that. Um, but... After watching them tonight, I think it would be great if they would become a tag team. Mysterio and Sin Cara would be a great tag team together. I could see them as future world champs within three or four months, if that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's it's funny because, you know, it's kind of like a mixed bag. You look at, the, you know, how Sin Cara has been received. Even in the second one, I think he still has a lot of support to win over. Maybe the tag team, though, would hasten that process. Imagine a team between that team and uh, Prepico. That's... I'm not even not kidding. Not a team, a match. A match between that team and Prepico. I'm not even kidding. When I tell you if that got a good amount of time, that could be a match of the year candidate. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it really could. That would be like reminiscent of 2003 SmackDown. Good God. That tag division was, I think, one of the best tag divisions in wrestling history. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think the only thing that could rival it what was TNA, you know, in its early years, you know, and especially when you got beer money and motor suit machine guns or, and all that. I'll even go as far as to say that another rival would be ROH before the Kings of Wrestling split. Right. Um, and they had Kings of Wrestling and uh, World's Greatest and the Briscoes and Steen Erico. It was just like they were stacked. And, yeah, you're right, too, with TNA talking about the machine guns and, and in- LAX, the original incarnation. Of right. LAX. L- yeah. LAX. And uh, how could uh, AJ Styles and forget? Daniels. Well, uh, Styles and Dan, beer money too. Beer money. I mean, yeah. so yeah, I mean, tag team wrestling. And, and see, you know, I'm a sucker for it. Oh yeah. And I think well, Cara, we'll about tag team wrestling on Twitwow. I promise. Just, de- just definitely. So everybody knows the link to Twitwow will be in the description. Episode 50, I believe 53 is going to be uploaded within the next few hours because we're going to record that as soon as we're done recording this. This will probably be up on my YouTube channel by, like, midnight, which means TwitWow will probably be up on iTunes by, like, 2.30, 3 o'clock, somewhere around there. The best podcast on pro wrestling today. But to get back, uh, my official pick is Sin Cara, and my last note on the Sin Cara Mysterio team, I think it could really benefit Sin Cara, and who knows? I, I think the fans would really get behind it. Yeah, absolutely, but... Regardless, Sin Cara, I think, would win in the the match with Cody Rhodes if they did that at SummerSlam. Although, I do agree with you. I think it would be great if Cody Rhodes would cut a promo beforehand talking about how he's been so focused on taking that mask off of Sin Cara that he's allowed himself to get beat. And I think that that would be the real emphasis, is he would say he's allowed himself to get beat. Because Sin Cara hasn't beaten him, he's beaten himself. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, that is uh, all I have as far as improv matches go. Do you have anything else? Uh, no. All right. WWE Championship match, Punk Cena show, go. Uh, I think it's going to be a solid match. Uh, it's one of those matches where I'm really more interested in the story, and I think WWE wants you to be, so I'm kind of you know feeding into their hands. Between Punk and Cena, right. show, despite being the 7-foot, 500-pound monster, is looking like the smallest man in this match. Uh, you know, in terms of like the booking, in terms of the uh, spotlight put on him. Uh, During the relevance. Exactly, exactly, Ash, and he's the most irrelevant man in this contest. And I think he's playing the role as like the taunter, because we know we're not getting Cena, Cena, Punky at one-on-one in their defined roles. What he's going to do, he's going to eat the poop. Exactly. Cena's going to nail a big move, probably an attitude adjustment. Punk is going to clock him in the back of the head with the title, and he is going to pin the big show. 
And that is how. And, and that's another thing. Let's not allow ourselves to forget that there is no disqualification, no countouts in a triple threat match. So heel Punk can do anything he wants to regain the title. Precisely. And and the way I just booked it, that's exactly how I see it going down. Yep. Cena's going to nail an attitude adjustment, which the commentators will oversell like they've never seen it before. Oh my God, Cena's digging down deep. That's what the WWE title means to him. He nails it. Crowd goes nuts. Punk with the title at the back of the head. And he covers the big show to retain his title as not only WWE champion, but best in the war. You know what? He doesn't even need to clock Cena in the back of the head. He can just give him one of those roundhouse kicks. That's very true. Knock him out cold. I want to see Punk win by submission, but we all know that won't happen. Regardless, I think we actually agree on this when I say that we both think Punk's winning. Absolutely. I, I will be mortified if the outcome is otherwise. <laughs> all right. All right. That's pretty cool. Now let's talk about the match that you and I are split on yet again, Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. <sighs> the perfect storm. Now let's get things straight. Is he the perfect storm, the beast incarnate, the next big thing? What is What, what is Brock Lesnar? Well, if you ask Paul Heyman, I think he's currently the baddest man on the planet. But I oh, think Mike that's Tyson right, the baddest man on the planet. Let's not forget that. I think Mike Tyson would have something to say to that. Oh, um, please. Mike Tyson hasn't been the baddest man on the planet for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Only with you and me when a boxer that's totally irrelevant to the product right now get buried. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's face it. He handed that title off to Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 14. Or 15. 15. No, it was so, 15. It was 14 when Austin won the title from Michaels. Yes. Um, and as far as your other point, yes. Uh, I would call him the next big thing. Uh, that's how I'm used to calling him Brock. Or the guy that sucks wind. I mean, you know, that's my personal favorite. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have so hits. much fun on But What are you going to do when that music hits, John? Oh, I'm, I'm going to be, yeah. I, I already told Ashton, guys, during live reactions that music hits, I'm going to be doing a rendition of his theme. Suck. Suck that wind. Suck that wind. Suck that wind. That wind. Suck that wind. Suck that wind. Suck. And then I'm just gonna be serious. What happened? So, yeah. Flab. Flab. Well, well, maybe flab. Maybe maybe it'll be the ultimate suck that wind flab remix. Oh my with dubstep. Oh, oh, oh god. Blah, blah, no, no, no. There will flab. not be dubstep in our live reactions. No. <laughs> Please. No. <laughs> <laughs> I already compromised on Shrinky Dinks. You are not getting dubstep. That's so true, guys. We have Shrinky Dinks at SummerSlam, but Ashton teased that he already used them, which if he did, we'd call them Shrunky Dinks, but he didn't, so they're actually Shrinky Dinks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we have a lot of predictions out there. We disagree on most of these matches, actually, John. Yeah, I am picking Lesnar to win this one. Uh, it's... It's crazy. I, I just feel like here's oh, my You're thing. picking Lesnar? I thought that we disagreed because I picked Lesnar and you picked Triple H. No, actually, I've if I did, honestly, not only would I not remember it, but I have come around. Uh, definitely Lesnar to win here. I think, in WWE's mind, if they want to keep this image of him as an animal, you know, they're going to want to get some Ws under Lesnar's belt. This way, if he loses to a guy like a Sheamus or an Orton, it's going to mean so much more. Or, in, in thinking really long term, if he's going to face Taker at Mania, and you said it best, you're the one who said this, and I just thought it was brilliant. You know, if he can't beat the man that Taker's already beaten twice, what right. kind of threat is he going to pose? So right. I think, honestly, I, I know this is a bold assertion that people may think I'm kind of, you know, overreacting. I think this match is must win for Brock Lesnar. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go that far. You know, I, man. I'm so torn here because, like, if the WWE knows what's smart for them, and unfortunately most of the time in cases like this they don't, Brock Lesnar wins. My problem being Triple H is Triple H, and Triple H is one of the very few kings of backstage politics who ranks right up there with The Rock and frickin' Kevin Nash. And I could see him... BS in his way into winning this match, convincing Vince McMahon that if he wins or if he doesn't win, the fans won't buy it because they have him so built up that there's no way he can possibly lose. 
I mean, and that's ridiculous. I mean, what what, what would be the excuse? Oh, that they're not going to believe it because, I mean, this is me, this pent-up aggression on behalf of my best friend. That could very easily translate into a loss. I mean, what about the lessons we'd always learn as children and growing up in the real world? You know, be in control of your emotions. Anger is blinding. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I could actually, if anything, Ashton, and, and maybe this is just one man's opinion, but I would be, you know, it would be more believable to me watching the product that, you know, him thinking about Sean and Sean weighing on his mind would be more of a detriment rather than an, than an aiding factor on his way to victory. Um, and, that, and that's really one of the big reasons why I am picking Lesnar to win. I think Triple H is going to make a slip up, which is uncharacteristic, you know, of his character, but it'll be because Sean is just weighing so heavily on his mind. And again, like I said, if you have these big plans for Lesnar, um, you know, big men are the only ones capable of executing big plans. You know what might and happen? What's that? Lesnar might break Triple H's arm and force the ref to call the match. That would be perfect, because you wouldn't compromise Triple H, which I'm sure he would love. And Brock Lesnar would, by technicality, walk out with the victory. Yep. And, yeah, I actually really like that. I'd go with that booking scenario to be perfect. Lesnar out. wins by ref stoppage. Definitely, because you know, if, if Brock Lesnar nails an F5, really, I'm not going to believe that it's going to be over. I fully expect Triple H to kick out. If he gets him in the Kimura, though, that's the game changer for me personally. Yeah, exactly. So, Brock Lesnar to win, though, for me, hopefully. It's it's not only what I want, it's what I do genuinely believe will happen. Right. Come on, dude, bring it home. Yeah, and now I'm right on board with you. We agree. Brock Lesnar to win. So, let's kind of recap everything. Uh, United States title match we agree on, Cesaro over. Yes. Uh, Kane versus Daniel Bryan, we disagree. I think Kane, you think Bryan. Right. Jericho Ziggler, we agree Ziggler. WWE tag title match, uh, you think PTP, I'm thinking our boom to retain. Intercontinental title match, Miz to retain is uh, consensus. World title, you think Del Rio, I think Sheamus. WWE title, CM Punk consensus, and Lesnar Triple H, Lesnar consensus. So, that is our official SummerSlam predictions. I know we got off onto a few tangents, but when you're working with me and John, that's just something that's going to freaking happen. Hey, we brought it back. Right, exactly. Oh, we're very we good about that. You guys, though, we are, we will, uh, as soon as we're done here, which is in like 10 seconds because I'm closing out right now, if you couldn't tell, uh, as soon as we're done here, we're going to be recording TwitWow, so we will be talking back to you guys, at least those of you that listen, which if you don't, I mean, come on, what's your problem? Your loss. In a few minutes. Uh, in your case, it'll be in a few hours, so... We will uh, be back as far as TwitWow goes, uh, as far as my channel goes, because this is up on my channel. Uh, expect my Cassius Ono FCW spotlight within the next week. Yes. I know I've said that before, but I had it all, uh, all the attributes and stuff all typed up and ready to go. And then my computer had its updates overnight and I lost everything because I didn't save because I'm sometimes stupid. So let's, uh, let's close this out, John. Anything left to say? Um, I love you guys. I love working with this guy. Amazing mind. Subscribe to Yannis. Well, check out the FCW Superstar Spotlight. I think it is the premier video series highlighting and spotlighting, you know, young talent, especially FCW talent, which is a great product in itself. I cannot wait to do SummerSlam live reactions. We hope you invite us onto your computer screens to witness that. And let's all revel in the fandom together, everybody, for the biggest party of the summer. So excited. All right. See you guys later.